In this video we're going to talk about arc length, linear speed, and angular speed. We're going to talk about the explanation of each of these three and then look at some examples. So the arc length on a unit circle is the same as the radian measure of angle theta. If we look at a circle that does not have a radius 1, which means the circle is not the unit circle, then this is not the case. So if we look at a circle that has a radius r, the radian measure theta of a rotation is the ratio of the distance s, which is called the arc length, to the length of the radius r. And we get the equation theta equals s over r, which is what you're seeing right here. We can also rewrite this equation solving for arc length and get s equals r times theta. So when r equals 1, in the case of the unit circle, you can see how s equals theta. And with any other radius, r is going to be the scaling factor. So the arc length will get larger in proportion to our radius. And keep in mind the note at the bottom of the screen here, theta must be in radians and s and r must be expressed in these same units. All right, now we're going to look at two different examples. The first example says, in a circle with 120 centimeter radius, an arc of 132 centimeters subtends an angle of how many radians and how many degrees to the nearest degree. So the first thing that we want to do is write down our given information. We're given a radius of 120 centimeters, and we're also given an arc length, which is represented by S, of 132 centimeters and it's asking for our angle. So our equation is theta equals s over r. Again we need to make sure that both s and r are in the same units and they are, they're both in centimeters. So we have theta equals 132 centimeters over 120 centimeters, putting this into my calculator, 132 divided by 120, I get 1.1, so I have theta equals 1.1 radians. Then it asks how many degrees would this be, so I can use my conversion factor if theta equals 1.1 radians, I can multiply that by 180 degrees over pi radians. My radians are going to cancel and I'm going to be left with theta is approximately 1.1 times 180. Don't forget to divide by pi. On a TI-83 calculator, your pi button can be found by hitting second and then the caret button or the button directly above the division button. Try to always use the pi button and not 3.14 as it may affect your rounding. So here we're given 63.03, but it says round to the nearest degree. So that's going to leave me with theta is approximately 63 degrees. This next example says in a circle with a two yard radius, how long is an arc associated with an angle of 1.6 radians? So this time we're given theta equals 1.6 radians and our radius is two yards. So this time I'm going to use the formula I had on the previous page where our arc length equals our radius times our angle theta. So S equals 2 yards times 1.6 radians, which gives me an arc length of 3.2 yards. All right, so now we're going to talk about linear speed. Linear speed is represented by V, is the distance traveled per unit of time. So we have this first equation, V equals S 
over t. Then we need to talk about angular speed, which is represented by omega. Omega is the amount of rotation per unit of time, and that's where this second equation here comes from, omega equals theta over t. So here it says the linear speed v of a point, a distance r, from the center of rotation is given by. And I left this blank so we could derive it together. Basically what we're looking for is we're looking for an equation that has linear speed in terms of our radius. So if you recall the previous equation that we had, theta equals s divided by r. Again, we can solve this for s and get s equals r times theta. I'm now going to take this equation and plug it in right here for our value of s, which is our arc length. So I get v, which is our linear speed, equals r times theta over t. And I can take it one step further and I can factor out that r and have r times theta over t. And if you see, this is in fact what we have here, theta over t. So I can get my final equation, v equals r times omega, which is my angular speed. So then looking at my next example, we have a wheel with a 30 centimeter radius is rotating at a rate of three radians per second. What is the linear speed of a point on the rim in meters per minute? So again, writing down what we're given, we're given our radius, which is 30 centimeters. Then we're giving rotating at a rate of three radians per second. Well, looking back on the previous slide, we have omega is the am amount of rotation per unit of time, which is exactly what this is saying. So this is giving us omega equals three radians per second. Using the equation that we just came up with, v, which is our linear speed, equals our radius times our omega, which is our angular speed. We get v equals 30 centimeters times 3 radians per second. But we have a small problem it's asking in meters per minute. And here we have centimeters and here we have seconds. So we're going to have to convert our units of measurement. So if I have 30 centimeters as my radius, I need to convert that into meters. So I'm going to use the conversion factor of 100 centimeters in one meter and that's going to make my centimeters cancel and be left with meters. And then for my angular speed, I have three radians per second, and it wants that in minutes. So again, I'm going to convert my seconds. So I have 60 seconds in one minute, making my seconds cancel out, and then I would be left with radians per minute. Putting all of this into my calculator, I get that the linear speed is 54 meters per minute. All right, in this last example, we have a dog has a 50-foot leash attached to the corner where the garage and fence meet. So as you can see in the picture below, here's the corner where the fence and garage meet, and here's the leash that's being attached to my dog. So that's my radius. So writing our given information, we have a radius equals 50 feet. And then it says, when the dog pulls the leash tight and walks from the fence to the garage, the arc the leash makes is 105 feet. So from the fence to the garage, this arc is 105 feet. So my arc length, represented by s, is 105 feet. 
it's asking what is the approximate measure of the angle between the garage and the fence in radians. So again, my formula, theta equals S over R. Again, we need to check to make sure S and R are both in the same units, and they are, they're both in feet. So we have 105 feet divided by 50 feet using my calculator. 105 divided by 50, I get 2.1. So theta equals 2.1 radians. Then it asks, what is that in degrees? So if theta equals 2.1 radians, using my conversion factor, I have 180 degrees divided by pi radians. My radians are going to cancel. And using my calculator, I have 2.1 times 180 degrees. Don't forget to divide by pi. And we get theta is approximately 120.3 degrees. 120.3 degrees. So that's really all you need to know about arc length, linear speed, and angular speed. Keep in mind the units of your radius and your arc length, and make sure that your final units are the units that the problem is asking for.